Uh, Congressman Cook, please. <clears throat> Captain uh, Fenstermarker, unlike some of the other testimony here today, uh, you said that uh, you didn't wait too long before you started talking about it. Am I correct in understanding that? No, I just, I just came forward after I saw Bob Salas. Oh, on Larkin excuse Lyman. me, I misunderstood that then. And I just want to say I would uh, commend all of you for coming out with your statements. And I certainly understand the reasons why <laughs> for many, many years you may be reluctant. But had you, I had thought I'd heard something that I misheard, obviously. And, uh, and uh, but the reason I'm asking this is because I want to ask you all each about the, um, the Air Force Project uh, Blue Book. Uh, Blue Book was being done, you know, there's a lot of money spent on Project Blue Book by the Air Force during, what, the 47 to 69 period, and some of your events occurred that you've talked about, certainly that you saw as your event, occurred while Blue Book was still being funded and yes. written about, and Blue Book is, uh, as I understand it, totally published now it's it's out um, and let me make sure I understand I think your the year of your um, what you saw witnessed uh, 76 Captain, 76 yes. and and again uh, 74, 74 66. 66 so both uh, <clears throat> uh, the two captains right directly in front of me here uh, the things that you saw is there any indication in Project Blue Book about those, or were you ever contacted in regards? To, I take it you were never no. contacted in regards to Project Blue Book at no, the time, or am I wrong on that? Uh, no. Or, or by I, anybody in the Air Force that was telling you that that's what they were doing. They were gathering. I realize they may not, they may take your statements and not tell you why they're taking them. And so well, the only thing they did with me is uh, shove a piece of paper in my face and told me to sign it. Um, I never heard another word about it afterwards. Uh, in, in researching, um, I've, been, I've been researching this subject for 18, 19 years now. Yeah. And uh, recently I, I discovered that Project Blue Book had secret files. Uh, they had two sets of files, one, one available to the public and a set of secret files. And uh, so I, again, I've got evidence of this. Uh, so no, when when the Conant investigator came to Malmstrom Air Force Base to talk to our, our deputy base commander, um, uh, Colonel Chase, Colonel Chase, this was a class of, said this was a classified incident. You could not review the report, uh, so they put it in a, a classified blue book file at the time. Okay, and do you, uh, do you have any feeling of the same question on the same question, Captain uh, Shindel? At the time, Simply. I knew nothing about Blue Book, per se. I do re recall an incident or an instance during my time at Minot where there was some discussion amongst some crew members about Blue Book. But I never knew what that was at the time um, until later, uh, four, 50 years late, 40 years later, and then I find out about Blue Book, and then I find out about this article in the Saturday Evening Post, and I find out about Val Smith, who's in my squadron, and then I find out about released documents from the Air Force that mention his name. And now I understand that's where the talk that's, about Blue Book came from. That's very that likely started. that not too many people in the Air Force, even uh, captains and colonels and everything else, uh, even generals, knew <laughs> that much about Blue Book. Am I right? I mean, I like... I imagine that you've reviewed some of what's in Blue Book since. I mean, recently, for example, uh, yes. Captain Salas. Is, is there anything in Blue Book that's been published now that, that, that would indicate anything close to what you saw in uh, Montana or in, let's see, it was North Minot, Dakota, North Minot, or in Wyoming, or in the other? Have you, right. have you looked at that? Is there any, in other words? No, sir. Well, okay. And, and do you have any, any of you have any feeling as to why Blue Book, why they stopped Blue Book? Or, or do you have any, can you give us your uh, opinion? Yes, sir. Totally opinion of why Blue Book was discontinued. Yes, Mr. Cook, uh, I, I alluded to it in my statement. 
Uh, the Condon investigation, which was supposed to look into the UFO question for the Air Force, was yeah. a whitewash. It was intended to allow the Air Force to uh, wash its hands of the UFO question. And I have evidence of that. Um, the evidence that I have is the fact that uh, uh, Dr. Craig, who was the chief investigator for Condon, uh, was given information about the Echo and Oscar flight shutdowns. He was given names and dates, et cetera, and uh, never followed up on it. The Con investigators never followed up on it. Uh, uh, Robert Lowe never followed up on it. It was never mentioned, uh, and that's because it was classified. I, I would like to just answer your question very quickly. I can give you the, the quick lowdown on Blue Book. Blue Book was formed in 1952 as a result of a tremendous upsurge in UFO sightings that were happening at that time. That was the only time in Blue Book's history that they actually had a staff that was capable of doing investigations. They had about 12 people. Um, their percentage of unknowns for that year was quite high. It was almost 25 percent. The order came down after the CIA-sponsored Robertson panel, which was at the very end of the Truman administration, to say, that's too high. Uh, this problem is too big and we need to we need to knock UFOs out of the public mind. And Blue Book was then gutted and stripped of, of really all capabilities. And for the rest of its existence, it had no more than a staff of about four or five people with no capability and were on strict orders. This is an explicit Air Force order of 1954-55 saying you are required to get your number of unknowns down to a bare minimum. And they did that by hook or crook, didn't matter. Uh, so they, they, it became very much a, a kind of an open joke, to be quite frank. The Blue Book explanations were generally not considered very valid because they were not uh, sufficiently investigated in any scientific way. I hope the chair will allow one quick follow-up question that will take 10 seconds to answer us all. And it, Co about proceed, that. Congressman. Okay. Oh. Is it your opinion then, Mr. Dolan, that the Air Force is more reluctant even today than they were during that period of 52 to 67 to even talk about or discuss or take information from captains and sergeants and colonels and even generals, any kind of pilots and so on, than they were then. I'd Absolutely. Like I believe that. This is a complete nightmare for them to deal with. 